So at that moment in my life, like I said, um, I could just play a bunch of songs where I, could, where I could really talk to you guys for just a second, if that's all right. Yeah. At that moment in my life, I didn't believe in anything. I didn't believe in anything except what numbed me from that pain of, of that child and, and that, that, that life that hit me in the face, right? I was crazy. And then something brought this young lady named Sarah into my life, right? And, and, and she came into my life and she had the balls to call everybody in the band and to call my parents and to call my dad, which was a cop. <laughs> DBA. And she was sitting, she, and she told him something's wrong with your son. Something's wrong with your son. We need to help him. And then they all came over to my house and had a meeting. They called those interventions. And they're all sitting around in a big circle reading these letters of how I hooked them up. You know, and I'm like, bullshit. And my dad said, man, if you accept this help, I'm going to fly you to a place in Nashville, Tennessee today. But you have to accept this help right now. And I said, good cop work, dad. <laughs> but I remember I was so powerless over it. And I know that y'all came to hear songs, but I feel like I need to tell y'all this part of it because this next, it's just, it's just, I remember, I remember, I remember because I looked at Sarah and Sarah at this time was pregnant with our daughter. And I looked at her and I said, I promise I'll never do it again. Just give me another chance. Just give me another chance. I'll never do it. Don't let me fucking go. Just promise, I promise I won't do it again. And then what do I do? I walk right out of the door, went to the bathroom and did it again. So somehow I must have said yes, because I ended up in this freaking place in Cumberland Heights in Nashville, Tennessee. And the only thing they told me that you could bring in here is yourself and a Bible. And I said, where the fuck am I? <laughs> is this a cult? I'm not a Jesus freak. And I said, I don't understand. And they said, we do steps here. And I said, what do you mean, like jazzercise and shit? And they said, no, 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 no. That charm ain't going to work here. Sit down and shut up. So I sat down. And she said, and I'll keep this simple, but it's just so important to me. She said, step one, kid. So you have to admit that you're powerless and that your life's unmanageable. And as soon as she said that, as soon as she said unmanageable, I remember sitting in that circle when I promised Sarah that I'd never do it again. I ran to the bathroom and done a promise and I looked up in the mirror. At that point, my face had turned green. I hadn't brushed my teeth in months. And I said, my life is unmanageable. My life is so unmanageable. And she said, okay, well now step two. And I said, what's step two? She said, you have to find a higher power. And I said, oh, is this where Jesus comes flying down into my freaking life? She says, no, man. Why does it always have to be about Jesus? She goes, a higher power is just something that you believe in that's bigger than yourself. Because let me ask you something, Justin. Lately, whenever you drive your life around, are you not driving it straight into a wall? And I said, you're good. <laughs> How did you know that? And she said, look, you really need to think about cleaning your shit up. You have kids now. You have people relying on you. And I said, I, you know, I, I'll... I'll give it a, you know, a few months. And she said, no, a little birdie told me you're about to have a daughter. And if you don't find this higher power, I doubt that you'll stay clean. And I said, bullshit. She goes, you're just, you think I'm playing with you. She goes, you need to think about someone else besides yourself now. And that's the first time anyone ever told me that because I was just in, in first and film, right? I did what I wanted to, but this lady didn't know me for shit. And she kept looking at me saying, you can do this. And I said, I'm so beat down. She said, you have to find this higher power. And I said, I don't understand. So she kicked me, boom, out the door, kissed me on the forehead. Good luck, sweetheart. And I went out. And I'm sitting there for 60 days walking around this place called Cumberland Heights, looking under everything for this freaking higher power. What the fuck is this? I'm going into churches in the morning, going, blah, 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 bring me the higher power now. Yeah. You know, like, I can't find it. And then I see all these 14 year olds coming by me going, I found my higher power. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Fuck> you. <laughs> Trying to intimidate these kids. You're like, what? <laughs> I swear I went in there looking like a 
out of shape penguin with black makeup all over his eyes. I think I'm kidding. Google me when you get out of here. Well, what happened was, and I'll keep this short, then we're gonna rock your face off. What happens was I was there for 60 days and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find this higher power because I just didn't get the concept of something bigger than Justin. Yeah. You know? And then the counselor comes up to me and he says, hey, we need to keep you here for another 16, 17 days. And I said, well, you're going to have to call up Sarah and see if they We've already called Sarah. She wants us to keep you as long as humanly possible. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so they sent me to this place called a halfway house, right? A halfway house, halfway from where you were to halfway to where you want to be. That's all I call it. And I'm living with all these other adults. Doctors, lawyers, people in radio, you know, people that all fallen down just like I had, and they just needed help getting back up. But what you did there is you learned how to make your bed again, how to brush your teeth, how to go grocery shopping. I'll tell you, the first time I went to a Walmart sober, <laughs> You know? But the point of it all is this. Day 73. Check this out, y'all. Day 73. I'm laying in my bed. And I set my alarm for 5 a.m. Because they told me I have to find this higher power. Or else I'm just not going to be able to stay clean. I don't believe it. Day 73, I set my alarm for 5 a.m. I wake up, brush my teeth real good, make my bed perfect, tuck in my shirt. I go downstairs, I grab my Marlboro Light and my coffee because they're not going to take that from me. <laughs> I go out on the back porch and I say, you up there? Everybody says you're up there. What's up? Show yourself. You know, if you're really up there, show yourself. Make that bush catch on fire right now. Woo! <laughs> Nothing, right? It's bullshit. All right, if you're up there, that squirrel right there is going to look at me and it's going to give me a good look. And that's you. And now you're going to jump from that tree to that tree and that's going to show me that you're real. The squirrel never even fucking appeared. You know? <sighs> and then I just literally stood there. And this is, you know, this is weird for me to tell you all this. This is weird, but like I stood there and I yelled at this guy. I was like, what did I do? It makes me so different than all these other people that are going around finding it. What did I do? And then it just dawned on me, oh yeah, I remember what you did. And I said, I'm sorry. And can I have a second chance? I said, just bring it to me like I'm a four-year-old. You're going to have to show me like I'm a four-year-old because I don't understand this complicated stuff. I've done so much damage to my brain, I guess I don't get it. As soon as I said that, I, this bee starts flying around. And I hate bees. <laughs> <laughs> this bee starts flying around and I swat it away and I remember thinking man I've already got ADD I can't focus on two things at once and I was pissed because he's bringing messing up my mojo with whoever's up there and I'm thinking this bee ah! and he's and I keep going please just forget the bee I'm actually literally talking to the sky saying please forget the bee just come down into my life and make, make me all warm and fuzzy and save my soul and I was like this and this bee and I'm like what the hell what the hell and I was like forget the bee just bring it down to me simple like a four year old please and this bee gets louder and louder and I look over at this bee and there's a freaking bee can that says bee killer on it and this bee is dancing on the top of it and I'm like, wow. I'm like, come on, man. Just bring it down to be simple. And so then I look over and his bee's getting louder and louder and he's banging his head against the top of this bee killer can. And finally I look at him and I go, what the hell is wrong with you? You've seen so many of your homies die from that shit, but yet you're still trying to get in there. And then I go. <laughs> this sense of glory strapped on my back like a golden backpack, you see. And I looked up and I said, is it really that simple? <laughs> and I don't, 
creature, but that, that's just so... I found my higher power, the bee killer king, right? <laughs> it's the only way that I can explain it. But check this out. Two days later, I fly home. And I get off that plane with this newfound glory inside of my heart, and I'm coming down the escalator. And who do I see down there pregnant? Yeah. She goes, I'm so proud of you. Oh. And I went, that's sh shame, I'm with you. She said, you want to drive? And I said, I've never driven sober. I don't think so. <laughs> Two weeks later, we get home. We have Sadie Bell. Yeah. And we're in the hospital. And I'm just shaking like a leaf because this is real. The baby comes, she cries, and the nurse hands her to me, and I say, I don't want to break her. And Sarah grabs my hand and she says, she's never going to have to see you this way.